Saranangachami Tatiampi Buddham Saranangachami Tatiampi Dhammang Saranangachami Tatiampi Sangham Saranangachami Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this evening's uh, Dhamma discussion and meditation practice. So, hope you all had a good uh, last week and was able to at least get in some uh, meditations on your own during the week. Uh, because, you know, these, these weekly, uh, you know, meditations together are, you know, just designed to be, you know, just uh, brief, uh, you know, battery charges for one's uh, meditation practice, but you know, to keep it uh, charged up uh, during the week also is very important. So, and it's through uh, you're doing your own meditations at home and so on that, you know, you get your own insights into and the Dhamma, which then might, uh, you know, spur some, you know, questions about some kind of experiences or things that you experience during meditation, or it could even be during uh, one's daily life. So anyway, as, we're, as I mentioned in the, uh, the weekly mailing, then I uh, wanted to, again, give an opportunity for you to ask some Dhamma questions, uh, Dhamma related uh, questions for some potential uh, discussion, or, you know, I try to answer. So no one uh, wrote in any question. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, then feel free to uh, raise the yellow hand, or you could just kind of speak up and ask a, a question. Okay, I see a yellow hand, uh, Suzanne. So do you have a question? I do, Bhante. Um, thank you. Um, I'm taking a nine month Zoom course on um, healing childhood trauma and um, it's, um, you know, there's didactics and then every two weeks there's practices and, and it's really designed beautifully. In some of the practices, you know, um, trauma is held, held in the body. In the, lat the latest um, practice, the leader, who's, who's a young woman, but very, um, mature in practice, she suggests that we breathe in a wholeness to parts of the body that have been most impacted by trauma. And um, I wonder, since meditation really is a body practice, I wonder if you could say a few words about that from your perspective and also as a yogic practitioner about you know when we breathe in wholeness or we breathe in loving kindness um how that really impacts the body or do you think that's true well uh, the meditation is not only <laughs> Trauma is not only held in the body, it's held in the mind as well. And, uh, and a lot of it is, I would say it's largely uh, mental because a person with a perfectly healthy body can have, still have mental uh, trauma. And a person that has a lot of physical energies, could, uh, their mind could be uh, you know, fairly okay. So, uh, but, really you know they're they're usually they're they're quite connected and the deep uh, breathing 
Sure, it, it oxygenates uh, the cells, I mean, the deep breathing. Uh, and if you focus on certain parts of the body, the mind can direct, uh, you know, sort of healing thoughts to, you know, different parts of, of the body. So if you imagine you're breathing in, let's say you have a certain, uh, uh, some difficulty in some part of the, of the body, you can, you know, take breaths and even to hold the air in the, in the lungs longer. And if you imagine that, you know, like a golden energy or a healing energy, uh, you know, going into those areas, then uh, that could have some positive uh, effect. And that's what I often do in, in some of the guided meditations that I give, you know, during these sessions, like at the end or in the yoga session too. Uh, I, you know, have you, you know, suggest keeping the air in the lungs several seconds before breathing out uh, so that the, all the oxygen in the lungs has time enough to get out into the bloodstream. And then the blood carries that oxygen, you know, to all the cells of, of the body. Uh, and like in a metta meditation, I, I uh, often, you know, start the metta meditation by taking a deep, slow breath and holding in the air for as long as you comfortably can to feel that subtle oxygenation of the blood and to imagine that as a healing energy, you know, permeating the whole uh, body, mind, nervous system, and then feeling the relaxation of that uh, on the out breath. So, yeah, there's lots of different uh, meditations that use uh, the breath, you know, and uh, you know, guiding it towards either parts of the body or just to the mental trauma too, but the whole body and mind. But, you know, if you have specific problems in the body, you can focus on those two more. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bunty. You're welcome. <clears throat> But, you know, so, so many physical problems, let alone trauma, but even other kind of problems are due to faulty and poor breathing uh, that uh, many people have because even doctors have never really told us to, to do deep, slow breathing because, you know, they don't know much about it, I suppose. But anyway, this has been, you know, one of the foundations of yoga is, you know, developing deep, slow breathing because it has so many healing uh, uh, qualities uh, just by itself, you know, without doing any other special visualizations and so on. Okay, we have a question from somebody here in our in our center tonight. So go ahead and ask your question. Wonderful. You can speak a little louder so people might be able to hear you over the sure. mic. My question is, what is the relation between is there a well, is there a relation between the sankaras and the subconscious mind? You know, they teach about subconscious mind in modern psychology. And I wanted to see what relation did the subconscious mind have in the Dhammavinya, is that connected to the Sankaras by any chance, or you know, what is your thoughts about that? So the question is a question about the relationship between the uh, subconscious mind and Sankaras, if there is a relationship. Yes. And I would say absolutely there's a relationship. Yes. Because the Sankaras basically are all of the habit formations, memories, emotions uh, and our ways of uh, acting and reacting, uh, all conditioned phenomena basically are sankharas, even the five aggregates uh, are sankharas in, in, in a sense. So, uh, and those habit patterns basically are there in the 
uh, you subconscious or unconscious part of the mind. Uh, you know, like, you know, you all know about memory, your, your ability to memorize things and, uh, and uh, you know, visions or visualizations, all these are sankaras. And, uh, you know, you can bring up a memory of, you know, last week and you wouldn't be able to unless it was kind of, you know, residing there in the uh, unconscious uh, mind. And that's why, uh, you know, the, the, the more stronger that uh, our, our reactions are, I mean, all of our actions of body, speech and mind, uh, and the things that we perceive through our senses, they are basically recorded in, in, uh, in the unconscious mind. Uh, and if they're very weak impressions, uh, they, we won't be able to recall them very easy, but the stronger ones, uh, you know, we can uh, recall them easier uh, because, uh, you know, they, they made a deeper impression. So basically, for all intents and purposes, sankaras in the unconscious mind are, uh, you know, pretty much uh, synonymous. Yes. And meditation practice is actually, you know, this idea of conscious mind and unconscious mind, there's no fine dividing line between them. And uh, when you develop a deeper level of meditation, it, it reveals what used to be unconscious. You, you can now begin to be conscious of what used to be unconscious, like the subtle sensations that I always talk about. You know, during the yoga sessions, you know, before meditation or even during the guided meditations, quite often I'm saying now to try to feel the subtle sensations, and especially after doing yoga, uh, because we're doing, uh, you know, exercise and doing the deep breathing. Uh, you know, you can feel the kind of you know, tingling sensations or, you know, other kind of uh, sensations that ordinarily you wouldn't uh, notice when your mind is in a more uh, distracted state or a sleepy state, so to speak. Uh, so, you know, in that way, uh, you know, unconscious and un uh, the conscious mind are just depending on your own ability to, to be conscious and how much you can be aware of. Is there any, I keep on having trouble finding my chat box. That happened last week too. Where's my chat box? Oh, here it is, chat. Okay, there we go. Um, okay. Yes, um, you found it? Yeah, I'm going to read from the chat box here. There's a question. In the Sanyata Nikaya, the Buddha says he could do many supernatural things. Are these merely to encourage others to do meditation? Or are they really true and possible? Well, those uh, you know, psychic powers uh, attributed to the Buddha, like being able to teletransport himself or to read the minds of others or, uh, you know, these things that you uh, read about. Uh, and, you know, of course, we take it on, you know, that they're mentioned in the yogic texts and not only the Buddha had them, but other monks and even yogis and uh, even the clairvoyance there's clairvoyance today that have some kind of uh, power so uh you know these things are are probably uh, true 
most people don't have that experience. Uh, but the Buddha exhibited them uh, uh, as a teaching uh, in order to help people, but he didn't want people to show off uh, their powers uh, just to attract disciples or uh, uh, because you see it even nowadays, there are some people who have maybe some powers, but they might use it to, you know, get power over others and uh, or even, you know, get mon monetary profit uh, out of it, you know, but others do it to inspire people like such as Sai Baba was a Hindu, you know, uh, Baba back in the 60s and 70s who exhibited had these powers to do things and he you know he had a lot of followers but he used that money to do good for dhamma open hospitals and schools and you know all kind of things like that and the the buddha you know helped it for people to get understanding in the dhamma by reading their minds and then being able to say the right thing the exact right thing that a person needed to hear in order to sort of wake up out of whatever delusion or you know bad habit they might have, have been in so you know it depends on the motivation of the person who is uh, exhibiting that power uh, as to what kind of karmic result uh, could come from that let me shoot that Yeah, so all those you, that you read there in this chat, you, uh, they could do that. But again, he did forbid them to do it, to show them to actually lay people. He could do it to other monks, but not for lay people, because then the lay people would be hounding them. You know, you know, if you start showing off this spiritual power or these kind of psychic powers, and you know, people are gonna come to challenge you or you know keep pestering you uh, show me show me show me show me and you know, and then it, and if you're not an arahant that's the danger actually if you're not an arahant then you you could go back in your defilements and then that's what happened to david data you know a lot of you know the famous story of david data who had psychic power to uh read minds and uh do things like that but he was not an arahant and so he let his defilements he wanted to you know wound and even to kill the buddha in order to uh, become the leader of of all the monks you know so and then he lost his ability to do those psychic powers so he got a lot of followers who believed he was an arahant but he he wasn't and then he let that power go to his mind and uh, you know, created a lot of bad karma. So, <clears throat> okay. This question, uh, Mahabharata's spawns more questions and answers what is the ideal interplay between thought and action taking and giving how can we tell right from wrong what is the dhamma well <laughs> there's a lot of different things in that question uh but there's no action without thought, really. You know, as the first verse of the Dhammapada says, all actions are led by the mind. Mind is the master, mind is the maker. Act or speak with an impure mind, that means a mind motivated by greed, selfish greed, hatred and delusion, and all the spin-off negative states. Uh, those, uh, you know, uh, bring negative reactions. And the opposite, the, the thought, speech, and actions uh, from the pure state of mind, that means the opposite of the unwholesome states. 
the wholesome qualities and bring, uh, bring more happiness and ease and comfort. Uh, and the Buddha said, uh, you know, the result of our actions, what is right and wrong, wrong actions, that means breaking the precepts and so on, lead to more problems in one's life. And abstaining from the wrong actions frees the mind from guilt, guilt worry, remorse, and fear. Uh, so that in itself is a difference, how you can tell right from wrong. If what you're doing is creating more confusion, more uh, pain, more problems in your life, then, then you're, you know, you're doing some wrong actions or wrong thoughts or the, the thoughts that you might have created in the, even the past or past lives catching up to you. If you don't do a lot of wholesome actions and a lot of that stuff that we did for even far back in the past could catch up to you and cause you uh, problems. So, uh, you know, the Buddha clearly st says that, you know, he gives a list of the 10 unwholesome uh, actions and the 10 wholesome actions. So the unwholesome actions are the opposite of the 10 wholesome actions. And basically it means following all the precepts and following all the, the, the steps of the Eightfold Path, including right speech, right action, and right thought, uh, and abstaining from the opposites of uh, those, the, those uh, opposite qualities. So it's very clear uh, you know, we follow the Buddhist teaching, you read a lot of other stuff and other texts, but we're not following other texts or we don't believe that all religions are necessarily the same. You know, we follow the, we're, you know, at least I am, <laughs> you know, most Buddhists follow the Buddhist teaching. Uh, and uh, so, but, you know, you have to have a certain amount of right view and, and understanding and uh, a certain amount of intelligence to be able to to understand what the Buddha taught, and, and, and as soon as you start practicing, you know, those steps of the Eightfold Path, then you will start to uh, gain the, the positive uh, benefits of that. And the question, what is Dhamma? Dhamma, again, is a very, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, full word that means everything. There's unwholesome dhammas and there's wholesome dhammas. But the, the, what is a dhamma in terms of the teaching of the Buddha are about cultivating all the wholesome states. And, uh, you know, those are found in the, you know, in the Eightfold Path and all the uh, related uh, teachings of the dhamma. I'm not going to go into all those details now because it's, you know, it would take too long. But if we're following, especially following the Eightfold Path and all of its steps, then uh, you can't really go wrong unless, you know, you're not doing it properly. And that's why right understanding is important in order to practice right thought, right speech, right action, you have to have right understanding. As the Buddha said, if if your understanding is wrong, your thoughts will be wrong, your speech will be wrong, your actions, your livelihood will be wrong, your mindfulness, concentration, and, and understanding will be wrong. So that's why, you know, the, the right understanding, the samadhiti, is, uh, you know, very important for uh, getting oriented onto the, you know, the path of Dhamma. Here's another chat uh, question. As you mentioned in deeper meditation, the subconsciousness reveals itself and the sankaras come up. That is when I attend a long retreat, the first two days, things from the past are coming up. Is that right? Is where our 
practice is to accept them, forgive them, and let them go. When we can reach the tranquility stage. Yes, in meditation, you all know that the monkey mind or incessant thoughts are one of the hindrances, thoughts of ill will, thoughts of sense desire, uh, you know, thoughts, ego oriented thoughts, memories of the past, uh, you know, connected with our wrong actions or desires, uh, you know, guilt, worry, remorse and fear type of thoughts come up. Now, all of these are in the unconscious part of the mind. You're not always experiencing these things. But when you uh, begin to concentrate your mind and you, you know, like getting centered in the body and, you know, developing the, you know, the awareness, mindfulness of breathing, whether you're doing deep, slow breathing and, and so on, and then feeling the body, scanning through the body, getting uh, more deeply grounded in the nervous system, the breathing in the body, then you will more easily see a stream of thoughts moving through the back of your mind until you attain the second jhana or the first jhana you will uh, you can perceive these uh, stream of thoughts that normally you don't have in your daily life unless you're daydreaming of course you know, but when you're engaged in your daily work and activities you have some you know wandering thoughts come in and out but because you're active doing other things they don't usually preoccupy your mind unless it's something very strong. But when you start to deliberately let go of your thoughts, then you can notice a steady stream of thoughts going through the back of the mind. But because your attention is developed with some concentration on the breathing, and uh, you know if you attain momentary concentration or access concentration or even the first jhana, then uh, you, the mind isn't getting stuck in those thoughts, but especially the momentary concentration. That means when uh, you're connected with the body and breathing and the mind is just uh, kind of floating from moment to moment with the, the breathing and the body sensations, uh, that's when you can also see a subtler stream of thoughts going through the back of the mind, but you don't get lost into them. Or if it does come up, you see it more quickly and just noting it as thinking, thinking, or desire, desire, or fear, fear. Usually it will drop away. Uh, it'll drop back into the unconscious and uh, you continue your, uh, you know, your moment to moment awareness. So, you know, those, those thoughts that are going through the back of the mind, those are basically from, from the unconscious, it's called the unconscious life continuum which is like a steady stream, a subterranean river that's uh, going on uh, of all of our past memories, experiences, uh, and emotions, and so on. And normally, if we're not grounded and centered or concentrated, we get carried away in those. And it takes us, triggers off all kinds of other thoughts and reactions, but only with concentration or the moment-to-moment -moment awareness, which is, a, you know, a, you know, the level of access concentration, or what they call uh, momentary concentration, kanika samadhi. That's when uh, the mind is just noticing things arising and vanishing, but not getting stuck on any of them. And even your thoughts, if they come up, the awareness will see them very quickly, and it won't, they won't stick in your mind, they'll just go back down in the unconscious. But if you don't have concentration and you start paying attention to the thoughts, or it could be a painful feeling or some other hindrance, then that's when they get a stronger grip on your mind. And then, uh, you know, your meditation practice, you know, gets uh, diluted or gets stalled or, uh, you know, stops. So... You know, and to accept uh, the thoughts or whatever is occurring, that's the first uh, step. And if having patience and endurance, the ability to have patience and endure when the things are strong impressions and thoughts are coming, uh, and to at least to have some connection with the body of breathing uh, helps you to endure uh, these strong thoughts or emotions without getting 
totally sucked into them. So that's how we, you know, have to, you know, one of these, maybe next week, I'll go over the Sabhasava Sutra again, which is the, the seven ways of dealing with, uh, you know, distracting thoughts uh, and so on that come up. Uh, not only in meditation, but also in one's uh, daily life. So, okay. So, uh, okay, friends, I think uh, we'll go ahead and uh, stop there then. And uh, as I mentioned last week, we want to uh, not have this first part of the session go on too long. So we'll take a few minutes uh, break and then uh, come and do uh, some yoga stretches and then our meditation practice, okay? So I'll see you back in a few minutes. Sadhu, 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 bhante. A lot of material here.
we can all hear me out there. So just try to stand straight, relax your arms at the sides. Keep your chin lifted up level with the floor. Just gently close your eyes. Try to feel your eyes in the sockets. Feel your head balanced on top of the neck. See if you can feel the outline of the standing body. And begin some deep, slow breathing. Try to take two or three seconds to expand your abdomen, rib cage, and upper chest. Hold the air in the lungs two or three seconds. And slowly breathe out. Take several deep, slow breaths like that, cultivating this mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out. Standing here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we'll combine this breathing with these stretching movements. Doing the movement while breathing in, holding the position for two seconds, holding in the breath. On the out breath, returning to the starting point, feeling the last bit of air go out of the lungs. So on the next in breath, raise the arms over the head, interlock the fingers, turn the palms up, straighten the arms. Stretch your head back, stretch upwards, and release your fingers, the out breath, arms back to the sides, let the last bit of air go out as the hands reach the side. The next in breath, interlock the fingers, stretch the neck. Arms up, bend back a little bit. Look up at the back of your hands. Release the fingers, out breath. Arms back to the side. <coughs> Once more, in. Reach up, bend backwards, feel the arch in the spine. Release the fingers out breath. Just close the eyes. Try to feel the increase. Subtle sensations, especially in your hands or fingers. You feel those subtle pulsations in your hands or fingers, that's the unconscious mind. You normally don't feel that. The same level as the unconscious mind. Feel the other body sensations. Clothing touching the skin. Mm -hmm. 
You on the next in breath, lift up on the toes by raising the hands over the head in this way. Place the hands toward each other, about six inches apart, and stretch up. Out breath, come back down. Breathe the in breath to help lift up the body. Oh. Once more, in. Feel the increased sensation, including touching the outer skin, subtle sensations under the skin, tingling sensation, pulsation. Try to feel the outline of the standing body, standing, standing. Letting go of the thoughts, just let the thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. The mind anchored, grounded in the body. Next, we'll do side bending using both arms. On the next in breath, raise both arms up. Keep your fingers and arms straight, close to your head. On the out breath, bend over the right side. Keep your arms parallel to each other, like railroad track. In breath, lift up. On the other side, out breath. And all the stretch sensation in breath and to the right out breath. Once more to each side. Up breath, lower the arms. Feeling the body, feel the increased sensation. You feel quite a lot of different sensations. That means your attention is now down closer to the unconscious level. We'll do the squatting or the knee bending. <clears throat> on the next in breath, lift up on the toes, raise the arms up front for balance. 
and the out breath bend the knees and lower down, balance the mountain. Balls of the feet come down into the squatting position. Take a deep breath, push up on the toes. Out breath. more Nine of the body and the mind's eye. It's an increased life force vibration. You were subtle thoughts moving to the back of the mind. Some urges that move. Now, spread your legs and feet apart, and feet and twisting from side to side, holding the arms out. Breathe in. The out breath, twist to the right. Keep the eyes focused on the hand going back. Let your feet turn with the body and twist to the other side. Keep alternating sides, breathing. It's more to each side. The eyes feel each foot pressing the floor. And feel the outline of the body and the mind's eye. Third eye of awareness. Notice the central stream of thoughts moving from the back of the mind.
Now place the hands together at the chest, in breath, hands over the head. In the out breath, hands to the chest, bend the knees, lower down, do the stretch in your hips and knees. In breath, lift all the way back up. Give you an out breath. Out breath, arms back to the sides, treating the whole body, don't give the mind time to get lost in thoughts, there are so many body sensations to observe, to feel, Pulsations, prickly sensations, tingling sensations, aches or pains, clothing touching the skin. Now we do the forward and backward bending, flex the spine, touching the front of your legs, breathe in, on the out breath bend forward, keep your head lifted up looking out straight ahead, let the hands come to your knees. Keep the legs straight, flatten your spine, feel those sensations, in breath lift up, move the hands under the buttocks for support, let your head go back on the out breath, gently bend backwards, let the eyes open, feel the arch in the spine, In breath, lift up. Second time, let your hands come below your knees, several inches or more. Still keep your head up, legs straight. Do the extra stretch in the back of your legs. In breath. Begin the back bend with the out breath. Just be careful. In breath. Third time, let the hands come down as far as you can towards your ankles or feet, and then hold on. Hold that position longer, feel the extra stretch in the back of the legs, let the little bones in the lower spine stretch out. Just feel all those sensations. And the in-breath. Once more, the back bend, be careful. Out breath. In. And the out 
breath, just relax your shoulders, feel the weight of the arms hanging at the sides, close the eyes, feel the outline of the body, each foot pressing the floor, closing and touching the skin. And feel lots of those sensations pretty much at the same time and have the awareness down closer to the unconscious level. Now bring your legs and feet closer together. We'll do one last simple exercise of head turning from right to left. On the in breath, turn your head to the right. Look over your right shoulder. The out breath, turn your head 180 degrees back to the left. Look over the left shoulder. In breath, right. Out breath, left. In breath, right. Once more to each side. And the in breath with the head stopped in the center. Feel the whole body. Feel all those increased life force vibrations. Imagine that as a healing energy permeating, saturating all the cells and tissues of the body mind system with healing awareness, penetrating down to the unconscious level, all the subtle vibrations. Okay, now let's come back to our seats, get ready for the sitting.
Please get comfortable in your sitting posture. Just try to align your spine and the back of your head in a straight line. Keep your chin lifted up level with the floor. You feel the, establish the natural inward curve of the lower lumbar spine. Gently close your eyes. You feel the eyes resting in the eye sockets. The eyelids stretched over the eyeballs. From that point on the eyes, try to feel the outline of the Sitting posture. You feel the sense of your head balanced on top. Just relax the shoulders. Feel the hands touching together, the buttocks pressing the seat. Feel your legs and feet tucked underneath. Just try to hold that outline of the sitting body in the mind's eye. The third eye. The eye of awareness. Then begins taking some three part breaths, deep, slow breaths, as we did in the yoga. Take a few seconds. To Expand your abdomen, rib cage, and upper chest, holding the air in for two or three seconds. Feel the subtle sensations. And slowly breathe out. Try to feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Take several more deep, slow breaths like that, cultivating this basic mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. And 
And now we're going to count our breaths from one to ten to develop a more continuous concentration on the breathing. So with the next expanding in breath, mentally count to one. Hold the breath for one second. With the contracting out breath, also count to one. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lung. Next in breath, two. Out, two. In three, out three, in four, out four, in five, out five, in six, Out six in seven out seven in eight. Out eight in nine out In ten, out ten, and just continue the counting. Let the breathing return to its uncontrolled, shorter, irregular rhythm. Continue to feel it, to observe it. Subtler, residual, expanding and contracting sensations. Try to feel whether clothing rubs against the skin of the stomach, rib cage, or chest. It expands and contracts. Or if you can feel the air moving in and out of the nostrils, you can also feel that. Just knowing when the breath is coming in and knowing when the breath is going out. You know it by feeling it. Try to tune the attention into the four phases of each breath cycle. An expanding in breath in the brief pause. 
contracting out the breath and the brief pause. To help stay focused, you can use these brief mental reminders in, in, sitting, out, out, sitting, the ongoing continuous present moment of this breathing body. Letting your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Just keep the sensations of the breathing body in the front of the awareness. In, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting, breath by breath, moment by moment. While you're observing the breathing, you may also notice other sensations coming and going in or around through the breathing body. Prickly sensations, aches or pains, tingling sensations. At the same time, be alert for the subtle stream of thoughts moving through the back of the mind. Thoughts trying to sneak up to steal your attention away. Still have lots of thoughts, you can try counting the breaths from one to ten again by yourself. To see if you can make it to ten without the mind either going to sleep or getting carried away in thought. Or just simply maintain that awareness of in in sitting out out sitting Thank you. 
feel like a scientist looking down through a microscope to notice the subtle movements of breathing, other sensations coming and going in the breathing body. We have a good concentration on the breathing. Notice other sensations. It means your mind is already at the door of the unconscious level. Or you can notice urges or other thoughts coming and going. But not getting carried away by them. From time to time, take a few deep, slow breaths. Keep centered awake in the body, the breathing body. Breath by breath, moment by moment. Noticing more and subtler sensations. Subtler thoughts coming and going in the back of the mind.
Turn up the power of the mental microscope to notice subtler and more sensations, thoughts coming and going. Just open up to the flow of impermanence. directly observing the unconscious level of awareness.
in in sitting out out sitting so many different sensations come and go sounds come and go thoughts ideas urges come and go Thoughts of I, me, and mine come and go. These are all just the constant flow of the unconscious elements of the body and mind, the five aggregates, the rising and vanishing. the space of present moment, body-centered awareness, the natural awareness,
And let us spend the last minutes of this meditation cultivating thoughts of metta or friendliness, best wishes to all, to ourself and all other beings. Let us begin some three-part breathing again, some deep, slow breathing. And after breathing in, hold the air in your lungs as long as you comfortably can. Try to feel those that oxygenated blood, there's a healing energy permeating through the body, mind, nervous system. And on an out breath, feel the last bit of air go out and the body and mind relaxing into the present moment. Just imagine that deep, slow breathing and awareness is the healing energy sending metta to all the cells of the body, mind, nervous system. Being friendly, doing something good for your body and mind, such as deep, slow breathing. And just cultivate this train of thought to yourself. Yeah, be well, happy, and peaceful. Yeah, be free from excessive attachment and greed, anger or hatred, jealousy, envy, fear, pride, and ignorance. Yeah, be free from the pain, sorrow, and sufferings of body and mind brought about by such unskillful thought, speech, and actions. May I also have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. May I be able to continue to deepen my understanding of the Dhamma and the practice of meditation to help free the mind from confusion and suffering. May I be well, peaceful, and wise. Now still kind of be aware of with each out breath or if you can feel your heartbeat with each out breath or heartbeat, just imagine these same kind of metta thoughts going outward in all ten directions, out of your house, through the streets, through the fields, through the towns, over the mountains, valleys, through the cities, those waves of metta vibrations of pure love, pure energy, pure wisdom, going through the bodies and minds of all beings, soothing the pains of the physical and mental pains, cooling the fires of the greed, hatred, and delusions. So with each out breath, their heartbeat, try to imagine these waves of metta thought going, expanding further and further outward in all directions, across the whole state, the whole country, across the oceans, through all the continents, enveloping the entire earth, these warm healing vibrations of life force, metta, thought, with the idea, may all living beings, wherever they might be, living near or far away, weak or the strong, rich or the poor, famous or the obscure, may all living beings be well, happy and peaceful, free from greed, hatred, fear and ignorance, 
free from self-created sufferings of body and mind brought about by their unskillful thought, speech, and actions. May all beings have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. May all beings have the good fortune to hear the mind-healing teachings of the Dhamma and the practice of meditation to help free the mind from confusion and suffering. May all beings be well, peaceful, and wise. May all beings be well, peaceful, and wise. Just like a mantra reverberating throughout space. Well, peaceful, and wise. Now to end this meditation, I invite you to join in chanting the word sadhu three times slowly. Do the chanting on a long out breath, feeling those healing vibrations in the body and mind. And take a deep breath. Sa Now mindfully place your hands at the edge of your knees. And take one more deep breath as you breathe in, stretch your head back, pull the hands against the knees to arch your spine. Lift the head up on an in breath, on the out breath, press the chin to the top of the chest to stretch the neck vertebrae. On the in breath, lift the chin up level. And on the out breath, Put a smile on your face. Okay, friends. So this brings our Wednesday evening meditation practice uh, to an end. And, uh, and again, as I've always mentioned, 
awareness should never really end because it's our natural state of attention whenever we just pause and relax, bring the mind back to the body, back to the breathing. So, try to, try to you know, have a regular daily practice of meditation or practicing the M and M's, and uh, perhaps this uh, weekend, uh, my the Dhamma talk on Saturday. We're having a retreat here at the Lion of Wisdom weekend retreat on Saturday, uh, about two o'clock. Eastern time, I'll perhaps I'll try to uh, have the Zoom, the Dhamma talk, and uh, broadcast uh, during that Zoom program the same link that you have now. Perhaps it'll be on YouTube Live also. So that's uh, the Saturday, the uh, 13th of uh, April, about 2 p.m. Okay. Until then, be well, be safe, be wise. Namo Buddhaya. Thank you, Bhante. Ilya Banyana, Ilya Banyana. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah.